Hello. My name is Pastor Vern Hall of the Free Gift Gospel Mission in Kingsport, Tennessee, and we're here this evening to share unto you the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the gospel of a living Savior. He's not dead, but he's alive. He's alive and well today. And I'd like to read to you the words of Christ from John chapter 11, where Jesus had this to say concerning himself. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And in John 14 and 19, he said, Because I live, ye shall live also. Dear friend, there is no life apart from Jesus Christ. There is no spiritual life. The unregenerate man, according to Ephesians chapter 2, is dead in trespasses and sins. There the Bible said, And you hath he quickened who were dead, in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh, and the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So the gospel of Christ is the gospel of a living Savior, a Savior who's able to give life to all who will put their faith and trust in Him, repent of their sins, turn to Him for life. The Word of God teaches us clearly that Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the truth and He is the life. German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche said that God is dead and we killed Him. But my dear friend, Nietzsche had to depend upon the uniformity that only the God of the Bible can provide to speak against God and trust that the words he spoke would have the same meaning five seconds after he spoke them. Dear friends, Karl Marx said religion is the opiate of the masses. But Karl Marx had a worldview that could not account for absolute truth. David Hume said that all knowledge comes by sense experience. But the problem with Hume's philosophy is that our knowledge of sense experience cannot come by sense experience. Dear friends, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid in Jesus Christ. God is our creator. We didn't crawl out from under a rock. We didn't evolve from a monkey. We didn't crawl out of a slime pit somewhere. But we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God who created us. And our God who created us because He is just and righteous and holy, He's a good God, and because He's a good God, He must punish sin. 
and the punishment that God has prescribed for sin is an eternity in hell. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's not one among us who's ever lived a perfect life. We've all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But here's the good news. Christ has come. Born of a virgin, made under the law, that He might redeem them which were under the curse of the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Jesus Christ came, born of a virgin. We just celebrated His birth several days ago. And because Christ has come and did what no other human being could ever do, He lived a perfect life from cradle to grave. He never sinned in thought, word, or deed. And He went all the way to the cross of Calvary and there offered Himself as a sacrifice for the sins of many. And what God requires of you and what God requires of me, what God requires of every one of us, is that we repent of our sins and believe the Gospel. That we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone not in ourselves, not in some other man or woman or teacher or moral individual or philosopher, not in tangible goods, not in our jobs, not in our socioeconomic status. Trust in none of these things, but trust in Christ and Him alone. For when we trust in Christ and Him alone, we repent of our sins and believe the gospel, we find Christ to be a perfect Savior. So my dear friend today, if you don't know Christ in a saving way, the call goes out. Repent and believe the Gospel. Trust Him today by faith. For He alone is the way to eternal and everlasting life. He said in John 3.16, Hear the words of Christ from John chapter 3. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world, verse 17, to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. My dear friend, if you don't know him today, we urge you, look to him, Christ, and him alone. And by faith, he's able to wash you whiter than snow and to make you a new creature. And you can be born again by grace through faith in Christ alone.